Welcome to Bed Crime Stories Podcast. I'm your host, T. If you like all things true crime, if you like it delivered in a peaceful, tranquil manner, if you like it clear and concise without drama, then I highly recommend you subscribe. And if you like what you hear, please smash the like button. It's a free way you can help. And now, without further ado, Let's dig in. When it was announced that Jay Slater's lifeless and broken body had been found in a ravine in Mosca, Tenerife, and that he had died from traumatic head injuries after falling from some height from a cliff, some people wondered how Jay could have stepped off a cliff. They said, do you mean to tell me that Jay was just walking along and then, oops, he just stepped off into the air without seeing the cliff in front of him. They said, that just doesn't make sense. Therefore, someone must have pushed him off. And I mean, we have all seen the image of the scent canine standing on the edge of the cliff. Even the dog knew not to step off the cliff toward his death. As I was pondering all this, I heard the father of a young woman who'd recently died during a hike in Yosemite National Park. I think it was that park. It was some place with a big mountain, okay? According to the father, his daughter was wearing new hiking boots, and when they got to a certain section, her boots became super slippery. Note to self, try out new hiking boots on a small mountain before you go to the big mountain. Tragically, despite her father being right next to her, and despite her knowing that her shoes were slippery, she took one step and slid right past him down into a ravine. And the daughter died due to a traumatic head injury right then and there. Alive one second and dead the next. That's how fast it happened. Could this be what happened to Jay Slater? His friend Brad said he heard Jay slipping on loose gravel. Jay was wearing regular tennis shoes, I think, not even hiking boots. Isn't it possible that Jay could have made a wrong step, landed on loose gravel, or even some wet moss, and accidentally slid off the ledge of a cliff? I'm just putting it out there because some people can't fathom how Jay could have fallen all on his own accord. I know a lot of people have said, look, there is a hiking trail. You can get down that ravine. You can make it to the beach. But listen to what I read about the trail down to Mosca Beach. This is called the Barranco de Mosca. And I read this on a hiking website called coffeeandbackpack.com. Before going on the hiking trail, it is requested to go to the visitor center where your booking will be checked. Remember to bring an ID with you. Your shoes will also be inspected, so make sure you wear proper hiking shoes. If the surface of your shoe's sole is too smooth, you might not be allowed to access the trail. If you don't have hiking shoes, it is possible to rent some at the visitor center. Instructions will be given to you at the visitor center before going on the trail. We were given a helmet to wear during the entire duration of the hike. The risk of rockfall is real in Mosca, and a number we had to memorize and communicate to a ranger at the start of the hike, on arrival at Mosca Beach, and finally at the end of the ascent. Everything is organized for the visitor center staff to know exactly where you are on the trail." End quote. So clearly, the people working in the visitor center warn hikers to wear proper hiking shoes and to also wear a helmet or what I sometimes call a brain bucket. Jay Slater had no freaking clue what he was up against in that ravine. It was like Mother Nature versus little Jay, who doesn't have the right gear. Now I want to get to topic number two, which is pretty much connected. It's why a local Tenerife searcher and property developer, a guy named Chris Pennington, 
aka Chris Tenerife, is telling people to F off. Apparently, he's having to defend himself against criticism. Chris is saying that he and another guy are the ones who figured out Jay's most likely path through this terrain. It sounds like Jay Slater would not have been found without the insistence of Christopher Tenerife and a friend of his who goes by Luggy, I believe. Together, they figured out Jay's likely path through the terrain and they became certain that he had to be somewhere in the right flank of the ravine. So Tenerife told LaGuardia Seville, hey, if you don't go back out there, to find and retrieve Jay. I'm going to help the Dutch search team when they arrive here to find Jay. And you guys are going to look like a bunch of bumbling, incompetent idiots. Per Chris Tenerife, once a person drops into the terrain after what's called the V-knot, it becomes a man trap, which he described as being a section where there's no way out. If you end up in a man trap, you can either stay there and wait to die, or you can try to continue. Unfortunately for Jay, he ended up on the right flank. He did not, per Christopher, take the left flank, which is the side with the established dirt hiking path. So Jay, not aware that there were two ways to get down to the Mosca Beach, unfortunately, just happened to choose the most dangerous side. And according to Christopher Tenerife, the Guardia Seville had opted not to search this difficult right flank because they said a person would need ropes to get down that side to the beach, and Jay Slater didn't have any rope with him. That's what I call faulty logic. This is when Christopher Tenerife had an aha moment and realized that Jay likely did hike down the right flank, and this is where he encountered the cliff from which he fell. Yes, Christopher Tenerife is certain that Jay fell due to an accident, not due to foul play. So Christopher figured out with help from this luggy Jay's location by a process of elimination. And he was right. The one thing Chris said he was not up for, however, was being the person who would come upon Jay's body first. He didn't want to have that sight imprinted on his brain. And who can blame him? It was 29 days if you believe this was an accident. And so the plan was to get as close to where you believe Jay is, and then ideally tell the Guardia Seville so that they could be the ones to bring in helicopters and retrieve the body. And if La Guardia Seville declined to do this, then to tell the search team from the Netherlands and have them bring in the helicopters and retrieve Jay. And the plan worked out brilliantly because La Guardia Seville did the right thing to save their reputation and they got to be the heroes and find Jay after Christopher Tenerife and his friend plotted out the path that Jay took. Christopher T said that it took him three and a half days to whittle his way down to the exact location where Jay's body was found. So this didn't just happen in one day. And Chris was saying this in response to the reporter, I think his name is Mark Thomas Williams or Mark Williams Thomas, What's in a name? A flower is still a flower, a rose is still a rose, yada, yada, yada. He's the guy who boasted that once he arrived in Tenerife, he would solve the case in three days, which he did not do. Chris Tenerife also said that if no one else would agree to help, he and his friend would have rented a boat, gone to the Mosca Beach or another adjacent beach, and then hiked up to the bottom of the ravine where Jay's body was laying. So if this story is true, it sounds like Christopher Tenerife strong-armed the Guardia Seville into going into the pinpointed location and retrieving Jay. And this may be why it was said that an anonymous tip was called into the Guardia Seville on the Saturday before Jay was found. I'm thinking that the tipster had to be Chris Tenerife. LaGuardia Seville definitely didn't want to look like idiots or like the bad news bears of law enforcement. Now, despite Chris Tenerife playing a critical role, I think, in finding Jay, apparently he's come under fire and people are criticizing him. 
and I'm not exactly sure why people have a problem with him. Is it because Wax Unfiltered said that Christopher DM'd him to try and collaborate with him? But then Christopher Tenerife criticized Wax Unfiltered, saying that he was responsible for most of the conspiracy theories that were floating around. Is that why Christopher Tenerife is getting criticized? Let me know in the comments because I'm not really sure. To me, he put boots on the ground to search in that dangerous terrain. To me, that's very admirable. And I'm pretty sure he wasn't paid for this. I don't think he got a cut of the Slater's GoFundMe. I think that this came out of the goodness of his heart. And he has said that if your kid or you went missing in an area like that, he would come out and search for you and your kid too. But as I was extolling all of Chris Tenerife's virtues, I stumbled on this video. She's pumpkin. The nectarine is like, you know, a peach without a fur. Probably don't get that in Yorkshire or Lancashire or where you're from. Hot tub. I think you might even break the rules because if I want to have a cigarette, I'll have one. TikTok's not going to tell me what to do, but you, yeah, TikTok will tell you what to do. Do you know why? Because you're looking for likes. You want followers because you, you're a sociopath. You're a needy person. You need likes. Do you know how much I need likes? This is how much I need likes. Hmm? That's how much I need likes. I'll do what I want on my video. TikTok. You, you'll bend over and take it on the backside for TikTok. Because you got no backbone. What are you going to do, TikTok? I was taking over countries at 22 years old. I was getting rid of dictators at 22 years old. What are you going to do to me? followers they'll all dance to your little tune won't they wasters plebs cretins no backbone come fight a war if it fucking smack them in the face there you go another side of christopher tenerife i think what this shows is that everyone in this story is human if jay set off through that terrain not because he was afraid, not because he was being chased, but rather because he thought it was a doable shortcut to the beach. That shows some naivete on his part and some poor decision-making skills. Christopher Tenerife, who normally looks like a really stand-up guy, a strong, knowledgeable, able guy who was willing to help out in a crisis, but who's also capable of making not so great decisions. Let's face it, posting this video is not a good look. Not that he gives to shites, as they say. If Jay got into this physical tussle with Mother Nature in the ravine because of his own flawed decision making, then he basically did this to himself. Christopher Tenerife, too, likely emboldened by a few pun may have put himself in not so great a path toward criticism by videotaping himself ranting in this manner. Let me know what you think in the comments and I'll see you next time on Bed Crime Stories.